Today marks it another significant moment in our democratic journey towards a more perfect union. The inauguration of the House Committee on the Review of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended is not just a ritual but a reflection of our collective resolve to ensure that the, fundament, the foundational documents of our democracy evolves to meet the aspiration of all Nigerians. Our population in 1999 was about 120 million. However, by 2023, we had exceeded 220 million. These rapid changes underscore the need to continuously transform the Constitution into a living and transformative document. I'm delighted to welcome the Senate President and our invited guests and development partners who have come to witness this very important national assignment. Since our inauguration on the 30th June 2023, the House expressed its commitments to continuous law reform. Specifically, our legislative agenda identified streamlining and improving the constitutional reform process as a cardinal objective. In this regard, the House is already working on a constitution alteration procedure bill to provide a framework and timeline for the passage of constitution alteration bills by the National Assembly and adoption by state houses of assembly. The early commencement of constitution review activities by the 10th House is set another step towards actualizing our agenda. The composition of the committee is representative, compri comp comprising one member from each of the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT. It is chaired by the Deputy Speaker, Ryan Honorable Benjamin Kalu, while the House Leader, Honorable Professor Julius Hovery, is the committee's Deputy Chairman. To ensure greater inclusion, the committee will also have six additional women, female representatives, women of the House, who each one of them will represent a geopolitical zone, and all other female members will be co-opted on advisory basis to deepen uh, their inclusion. Similarly, the House Zonal Caucus leaders have also been co-opted in an advisory capacity to advise the committee on issues relating to their respective zones. Lastly, the committee secretarial will also include a representative of people living with disabilities to ensure that their concerns are properly accommodated. The mandate of the committee is to receive and consider proposals for alteration of the 1999 Constitution, create a forum for stakeholders and the public to make inputs into the review process and collaborate with the Senate and the State Houses of Assembly as required by law. As we integrate the CRC, it is essential to acknowledge the Doni Nigeria's impact upon since the return to democracy in 1999. Our country has witnessed significant milestones and challenges alike. Through each phase, our democracy has been tested and is still being challenged. Yet, even after 25 years, it stands resilient, reinforced by our collective belief in the principles of freedom, equality, and justice for all. The 1999 Constitution, as the supreme law of the land, has been the ground norm of our democracy for over two decades. Yet, like any great edifice, it requires periodic assessment and review to ensure it meets the changing needs 
and aspiration of our people. While some citizens argue that the document should be entirely discarded, it is important to remember that democratic consolidation can only be incremental and gradual. Even more mature democracies have accepted this position in advancing democratic consolidations. For instance, the United States has ratified more than 27 amendments to its constitution. Since the inception of the Fourth Republic, the constitution has been subjected to five alterations with landmark changes that have strengthened our democratic institutions. Federalism and governance generally. The first and second alterations provided for the financial independence of the National Assembly, an independent National Electoral Commission, and granted the Supreme Court jurisdiction on appeals from the Court of Appeal on the election of governors and their deputies. The third and fourth alterations, among others, established the National Industrial Courts under the Constitution as a superior court of record and provided for the funding of the houses of assemblies of states directly from the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the state. Under the Ninth Assembly, the fifth alteration made some of the most far-reaching amendments. It clarified and reinforced financial autonomy for states, houses of assembly, and judiciary. Decongested the executive list, defined guidelines for the first session, and immigration of members elect of the national and state houses of assembly, and deleted reference to the provisions of the criminal court, penal court, criminal procedure act, criminal procedure court, or evidence act, among others. All these made the fifth alteration the most extensive since 1999. Right honorable colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we expect the sixth alteration under this 10th National Assembly to be the most comprehensive yet. As such, the task before the Constitutional Review Committee is profound. The House agenda is ambitious in its scope and encompasses wide-ranging issues pivotal to our national growth. Among these are the devolution of powers, including state policing, enhancement of fiscal federalism through local government or not autonomy, further decongesting the exclusive legislative list, recognizing and assigning constitutional roles for traditional institutions, and promoting inclusivity, particularly greater gender equity and women representation into appointive and elective positions. Regarding the latter, I employ this committee to align its work with the legislative agenda. I urge you to revisit the issue of additional or reserved seats for women across legislative bodies. Training in joint tickets and conferring citizenship on foreigners married to Nigerian women. Other critical areas for your consideration include implementing comprehensive electoral reforms to address the gaps identified in the aftermath of the 2023 general elections. Strengthening the enforceability of legislative instruments and institutional strengthening for greater accountability, among others. These, are area, these areas are crucial for reinforcing our democracy and ensuring that the governance structure meets the needs and aspirations of all Nigerians. Several bills have already been introduced in both the Senate and the House, touching on some of these very important issues. I encourage members of the committee and all Nigerians not to shy away from the complexities and the debates that will arise during this process. Instead, 
let us embrace them as vital components of a vibrant democracy. These discussions and dis uh, disagreements are no signs of weakness, but rather indications of our strength and diversity. They remind us that we are a nation of many voices, each with something valuable to contribute to our collective future. However, in making recommendations and proposals that potentially have far-reaching impacts, such as state police, I strongly recommend that we adopt a scientific approach grounded in empirical evidence rather than ideology, personal beliefs, or political expediency. I also challenge us to go beyond traditional and generic prescriptions and explore gradualism in making, in making with the understanding that social change can be achieved in small, discrete increments rather than in approach strokes or grand solutions. This gradual process will allow us to pilot innovative solutions, engage in meaningful experimentation, and gather concrete data and facts to inform our decisions. Also, this approach ensures that reforms are not only reflective, but also adapted to the unique needs and challenges of our great nation. Through this careful and considered process, we can achieve sustainable and impactful changes for the good of our country and all Nigerians. The methodology to be adopted by this Constitution Review Committee will emphasize inclusivity, transparency, and collaboration. From the onset, we shall work closely with the executive arm, both at the federal and subnational levels. This partnership stems from recognizing their pivotal role in governance, ensuring that our review process is comprehensive and considers the practical aspects of implementation. Equally, the process will involve states out of assembly to foster consensus and expedite adoption by states. But more importantly, the process will deeply will be deeply rooted in engaging with the Nigerian people at all levels, including traditional and religious institutions, pleasure groups and trade unions, ethno-religious organizations, the diaspora community, and much more. Your insights, experiences, and aspirations will be the cornerstone of this review. We intend to harness the inputs of all Nigerians at all levels, of, at, at, the, at all levels and at the level of all our local governments through open forum interactions, public consultations, and digital platforms, ensuring that every voice is heard and considered. As we embark on the essential task of constitutional review, the House has adopted a strategy of timely commencement. This proactive approach is designed to ensure, through engagement and deliberation, by starting early, we aim to facilitate comprehensive review process, allowing ample time for robust public engagements, detailed analysis, and thoughtful consideration of proposals for amendments. This approach also ensures that the review is concluded in good time and avoids some of the setbacks experienced in the past occasioned by late commencements. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, while the constitutional amendment process is both costly and laden with contentious issues, the benefits far outweigh the challenges. It is an opportunity to address the pressing issues that have emerged in our polity, to close gaps in our legal systems, and to strengthen the foundation of our democracy. As such, I urge all members of the Committee on Constitution Review and indeed all Nigerians to approach this exercise with an open mind, a spirit of patriotism, and a commitment to the greater good. Our goal should not be to win arguments, but to build consensus, to not just amend laws, 
but to forge a more unified, just and prosperous Nigeria. I commend everyone involved in this endeavor, especially my deputy, Right Honorable Benjamin Okezekalu, House Leader Professor Julius Hevere, and all members of this committee, the Secretariat, and all our partners. May your deliberations be guided by wisdom, fairness, and a deep duty to our country. Together, we can achieve a constitution that not only addresses our current challenges, but also anticipates the future needs of our great nation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I will require all members of the review committee to please rise for the inauguration. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and pleasure to formally inaugurate the Committee on Constitutional Review of the 10th House of Representatives for the service of our nation. Thank you very much as we pray that God may continue to bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Another resounding applause for the Speaker House of Representatives, the White Honorable Abbas Tajuddin PhD. We appreciate you who has gone ahead to inaugurate the House of Representatives Committee on Constitution Review and the Stent Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'd like to invite, or rather, inform you first of all that the next will be the opportunity for Nigerians and Nigerians in the diaspora to lend their voice to what is happening here. And that is a segment, for me, the most critical segment and the most crucial one, and is all-inclusive, that is the citizens' engagement that will happen next. That's the next segment.